it's time for a tour. So normally I like to clean up the garden, get everything looking really good uh, before I give a tour because that's how we want other people to see our gardens, right? Well, I was walking around the garden last night after some rain and I realized it's actually looking pretty good in some places or at least interesting right now, but I don't have time to do a big cleanup. So we're going to do a tour anyway. So fair warning, you're going to see some weeds. You're going to see what the garden looks like before I run around like crazy and clean it up for a tour. Um, and we're going to break this up a little bit. I think for this video, uh, we're going to focus on the garden that I did with Roy Diblick and then the gardens in this area that sort of were spurred by that garden. So here is Roy's garden. Now I'm going to put some links to previous videos on this. If you didn't see this come together, but uh, long story short, this is a garden that I designed with Roy Divlick. Actually, Roy mostly designed it and, you know, I had some conversations about it with him, but, but this is really Roy's work here in terms of the design. Uh, we planted this up in early May. Uh, almost everything came from a gallon pot. And uh, what you see here is what it's looking like. Now, let's walk around and take a close look at some of the plants here. So first of all, I'm just gonna point out because it's all I personally see, we have lamb's quarters. Lots and lots of lamb's quarters. I'm not sure how the lamb's quarters got here. Um, that usually is an annual seed that seeds around, um, but conceivably most of the soil that was in here was new, so maybe it came in on the soil. It doesn't really matter. It's easy to pull. It's also edible. I always say when it comes to like foraging out of your garden, do not trust me. I am not an expert at this. There are people who are experts and there are books on the subject and you should trust those, not me. Long story short, never trust me. Do your own research on what to eat. But I do think lamb's quarters is edible and there's something good about it. I know nothing about it. What I know is that it's a weed that I spend a lot of time pulling. So we're just gonna start here sort of um, at the corner and we'll work our way around. So this is, um, this is a skunk cabbage here. Obviously we didn't plant this. This was here. I let it there, but this is what skunk cabbage does, by the way. It just sort of, in spring it looks beautiful and bright and green, and then it just sort of crisps up and turns black and kind of dies back throughout summer. Uh, this is all Dyschampia goldtow, and it's just starting to flower here. And you can imagine how pretty this area is going to be when that all fills in, because it'll just be a wash in this sort of ethereal color. Here's where we planted most of the crystal blue salvia. I've already cut it back and you can see that some have started to reflower. Now when you cut back a salvia, the reflowering will never be as good as the original flowering, um, but you will get some new color. Now, you guys, I keep looking, you know, I cannot remember what this plant is. It's essentially like a sea lavender, like limonium but it's not, it's something different. And I have to write to Roy to figure out what it is, but it's awfully pretty. And it definitely has that, you know, baby's breath status sort of look to it. Um, and it's quite pretty in here and it's spread throughout. This is the area here, if you can see in this area where this is mostly alliums. Now we sort of push them into other areas a little bit, but this is uh, summer beauty. And then in here is also one called shorty that Roy discovered and I think that is perhaps this one is shorty because it's definitely shorter um, so I'm interested to see that one that one grow we did put some coreopsis in here uh, golden showers and you can kind of see it worked through here and it does come down here it's not flowering in all the places yet um, but it does add a really bright color. And especially, you know, the color's not great in this garden this year, so it's actually really, um, really quite lovely. So these pink flowers are Nepeta subsessilis. I can't recall what uh, variety they are, um, but they've been really pretty in here too. And uh, more and more and more, I've been appreciating Nepeta subsessilis as just a really great plant. Now we do have some cone flowers in here. Um, they're just starting to get going. This is uh, white swan. So these will all be white flowers coming up through here. We have um, some additional salvia here. So this is, um, this is Blue Hill. And I think with Blue Hill, Roy recommended not cutting that one back because new foliage or new flowers will come up right through the old foliage and you'll get kind of a bicolor look on it. So we're going to give that a try and see uh, how we like that. There are a couple of uh, white 
uh, I believe it's called White Hills, uh, mix in. I think we just brought one or two of those just for a little bit of additional flavor here. And then as we move over here, we get into, this is Stacky's Humalo, and we have um, the grass in here is uh, Sporobolus heterolepsis. So those were little two inch plugs um, that we planted two together. So it'll take a while for those to, for those to fill in. Um, down here, I planted all these. Uh, this is um, Carex Montana down here. Uh, and it's good for this spot because it can handle being like soaking wet and it can handle a little bit of dry. So I've planted it all along the creek where this is liable to get, you know, at times both of those conditions are true. You can see that right now the creek is completely empty. Um, but if we get a big rain, it will fill up and it will come up these banks. I've put a big one uh, over there as well. On this side of the garden, now I haven't edged this or anything yet. Uh, we'll get to that. Um, this is all... Um, Zelgeranium macrorhizum, a couple different varieties in here. I think this is Ingerworsens in here, this sort of light colored flowered one. And then there is another one with sort of a different leaf structure and that one's called hot pink or something. It's new. These are the flowers on it. New, a new plant this year. So those will sort of intertwine and fill in. I did come through here and mulch with leaves. Um, I was trying, I was actually not going to mulch uh, just because I hate mulching, but the weeds were becoming a problem. So I did mulch with leaves and that has been helping quite a bit. Uh, the pagoda dogwood is doing okay. Uh, you can see there's been a fair amount of deer brows on it. I think you can see like here we've got like these, anytime you see these rough edges, that's deer brows, but it's not terrible. Um, and as long as I keep up with the spraying, it'll be just fine here. So for a garden that's been in the ground for just over two months, I think that's looking pretty good. Um, I think that, uh, oh, and down here, I, we did miss a plant. This is um, grape blue lobelia. This is our native uh, lobelia down here, which is also good for these moist areas. And I did put in like some purple flame irises, which bloomed really pretty uh, along the edges here. So now I want to show you the gardens that were developed sort of because of this, that flowed out of this. So if you recall, this whole reason this area got done is because we had septic work done here. And we had to rip up a lot of this area and a lot more than I thought we would. And there were some trees taken down and so gardens came to be. So right across the path from Roy's garden, here's our little path. Now, um, perhaps I guess I haven't updated this in a video where you see this stump right here uh, was the most beautiful uh, beech tree you've ever seen. And uh, about mm, probably a month ago now, maybe three weeks, it just fell over one day. It was dead. It was, it was totally hollow in the center. It had a lot of issues. We didn't realize how far gone it was. And one day it just fell over. So uh, the whole landscape has changed quite a bit, although the sun has not been affected. But this path used to come out to this beautiful view of that uh, beech tree. And now, unfortunately, it's gone, which is really sad. Um, but that's, uh, that's, that's life, right? So uh, we're trying to move on from that bit of sadness. Uh, and here over here is a garden that um, I did using many of the same plants that Roy did and just sort of extending this design this way. Now it's not finished. It's going to keep going for a bit over here, um, but this is where we're pausing for this year. So I've just brought that uh, Dischampia gold towel over here. Lots of salvia in here. We've got more of the uh, um, Blue Hill and we've got uh, snow. I think it's Snow Hill is what the white one is called. Uh, th growing through here, mixed in amongst the Dischampia. Uh, here we've got, um, hmm. let me put this one on the screen. This is something I bought at Roy's, at Roy's place. And uh, it's so pretty. Look at those adorable flowers. Uh, it wasn't something that I had really known about, um, but I have three of them now and I think they're really quite pretty. Uh, here we've got some Ansonia in here. I don't know which one because I can't remember what that is either. Losing my mind here. More of the uh, white swan echinacea in here. So we've got three of these Amsonias here, here, and there. We've worked in a fair amount of other grasses through here as well. 
Um, here is some nepeta that I divided from elsewhere in the garden. I think it's Walker's Low, but I'm not positive because, uh, like I said, I just divided it from elsewhere in the garden. Nepeta will be a great plant to fill in in this area. By the way, I'll just note that these all these septic caps that you see here, uh, I stained them with regular black stain, and for the top caps, I just used black spray paint. So I think it worked pretty well. It was much better than the white that we were looking at. Here's a Baptisia. This is um, a white one from Proven Winners. Uh, so I hope that that will fill in nicely. So these three shrubs over here are all blue kazoo spirea that I had planted somewhere else. I had to dig them up for the work. They spent the winter in the veg raised bed vegetable gardens and then I moved them back over here and actually They've got some holes in them here and there, um, but actually they've really recovered well from that trauma. Now this empty space you see in the ground here is not really empty because you might see these little things sticking out of the ground. So this is all geranium macrorhizum. I had to move it. I let it sit for too long. So some of it wasn't looking good, but it's such a tough plant. I really think it's gonna recover. So I just planted the root pieces anyway. In some places you can see it is coming up. Uh, same deal here with the geranium macrorhizum, sort of half there. Uh, we've got some, uh, over here we've got some Carex pensylvanica, which I think will do really well because now we're getting into quite shady area over here. And I've got some uh, pulmonaria, and there's supposed to be four, and I only see three. Oh, there's the fourth one, hello. Uh, over here, um, this is Diane Claire, and this is... This is spot on. I think it's a new one from uh, Proven Winners. And then we've got, this is a Pagoda Dogwood, the partner to the other one that was in a pot last year that was significantly damaged during the, um, the septic work. So I brought it over here. It's quite misshapen. It doesn't look great, but I think it'll pull through. It's pretty tough, pretty tough plant. I've got three... Um, Russian cypress is over here. This is such a good plant. It's a shrub. I see one is struggling a little bit over there. I don't know if those are broken branches or what. I'll have to check. Uh, grows well in a pretty shady spot and it's basically a, an evergreen ground cover. It will spread out and get, I think about five feet wide and it's super hardy. I think hardy down to zone three. I did move a hosta with some jewelweed growing through it. I did move this hosta over here. Uh, that was another saved plant. Taking some chances over here with a hosta in what is probably a big zero zone. But um, sometimes, if I, as long as I keep up on the spray, we're okay. See, we're able to manage that. Before we cross over across the creek, and I can't wait to get these beds edged, I want to show you just one little corner that I worked on over here. So right on, on this little path on the other side of Roy's garden, I did do just a tiny little strip here. I'm really happy with it. This is, um, you know, pretty shady, but really when the sun comes in here an angle, especially in the morning, this is actually like full sun in the morning. Um, this is um, Scottish Lovage uh, right here. Just really great, lovely, sort of cute round leaves. Um, got some Bowman's root right here. We've got more of that pulmonaria. This is Autumn, Fro uh, Autumn Bride Hosta. Nope. This is Autumn Bride Heuchera, which is, it's a uh, Heuchera villosa, which is native here. And it seems to be doing really well. So I planted a ton of it this year. We've got uh, Carex here. This is a, a wide leaf Carex that uh, uh, just offers this great texture here. We've also got some more Carex Montana pop, uh, popped in there. And then as we come down here, we end up with more of that down here, as well as um, Ligulera. This is uh, Desdemona down here. This has created a really lovely texture story here, particularly with this grass against the broader foliages. So it only really, really runs to about here. Um, and then the idea is that we'll spread into this other area because I don't have a lot planted there. I just have um, a few hellebores planted in there, 
but I just haven't been able to get to that spot yet. So the idea is that these gardens will spread with time, but right now along the path, I think it looks really nice over here. I don't wanna to get too much into this area because we're gonna cover that in a separate tour video. Um, but this area did get quite a makeover and we'll talk about that there and why that happened. But over here is another area that got really revamped. Now this is where we had an old part of the septic system here and that tank was uh, just properly destroyed and taken care of. So we had to fill this area in. This is where many of those shrubs came from and I just kind of kept with this same general theme that we worked on in Roy's garden. And this I planted really densely and I think it's actually looking really good. Um, now I will have to edit in the future for sure, but I'd rather edit in the future than have it be sparse right now. So let's start over in this corner. Well, first of all, this is just to give you some space here. This is the, or some idea of where we are. This is the tricolor beach over there. And essentially everything from the tricolor beach over and from that hosta back is what was here before. So we're just talking about in terms of new area, we're just talking about this right here. So in this garden, we've got, uh, you see this beautiful lime color. This is the Drops of Jupiter Ornamental Oregano. This is a great example of what you can do if you divide plants. I got two of these plants in uh, two gallon pots from Walter's Gardens when I visited them in spring. And I brought them home and I divided them each into three pieces. And you can see how much, I mean, they, each one of these plants would be two gallon in a two gallon pot already. So you can see how much they've spread. Really lovely color. And I'm really looking forward to seeing it flower to see what that all looks like. Um, the grass that you see mixed in here, this is Cesslaria autumnalis. Um, the Echinacea that's through here was planted from plugs. This is, I think it's called Pretty Parasol. And, uh, you know, it's white with this sort of pink center. And generally it has that, you know, it's called Parasol because it has that sort of drooping umbrella type shape. Um, looks really beautiful. I'm always worried of Echinacea to see how long they're going to last, but I think it looks really pretty as we go through here. Uh, I never used to like Achillea, and here I am with it in a lot of places. This is Moonshine, which is kind of a classic. It's not really the one I wanted, it's the one I could find. So these blooms are a little older. This one over here is uh, more typical of a new flower. It's very, it's almost this sulfur color um, that works. So as those flowers age, they turn a little bit more golden, which is not generally my color palette, but I like it in this garden. It's bright and fun. Uh, this is a geranium that's going to get uh, quite large. And, uh, um, perennial geranium is going to get quite large and kind of fill in through here. I have put in some Nicotiana that I grew from seed in here to fill in for this year. Purple Tears grass uh, worked in through here, which will get these beautiful, uh, beautiful purple flowers on it. Now this is, and these leaves, you can see these are the leaves of it. That is, this is limonium, and these are the flowers just starting to, to form here. You can barely see them, and they're not open yet. They're just budding. Uh, the tall plant here in the middle is Flomus. This is Amazon. Uh, I picked this up at Roy's place. I've been really into Flomus, but I've been trying to grow Russellinii, which did bloom for me last year and seems to have disappeared this year. So hopefully uh, this one will be better in my garden. I also have um, some Sanguisorba in here. Uh, that all came from, uh, I think those actually made, they're big enough, they probably came from Royce. I can't. I bought so many plants this year, you guys, I can't remember where they all came from. Um, so that's a Sanguisorba. Sanguisorba will get these beautiful flowers that, you know, like kind of like little balls on sticks that will stick up soon. Um, what you're probably all looking at here is this beautiful little area of, this is all stackies also known as Betany. Uh, this is Stachys humulo, is the dark one. You can see that the bees are loving it. And the light one is uh, Summer Crush. And the pair of the two of them together, I am absolutely really digging. I think it looks really good. I've stuck some more of that hot pink geranium around the edges to fill in. And we've got some more salvia here. 
these hostas were here before and this area used to be uh, more shaded and there was more in here to shade these. So uh, we're gonna just keep an eye on these and see how they're doing. They're starting to discolor a touch, but they don't look terrible. I've got some more Autumn Bride uh, Hukura over here, another hosta that is kind of sticking over the edge that was here before. And before I switch over to the other side of the path, I did bring over some Salvia Argentia. These are all seedlings, so that's why they are blooming because this is a biennial, so I'm letting these bloom. Uh, these are all um, seedlings that I pulled out other places in the garden. This is Tinkerbell Nicotiana. This is the Nicotiana that I stuck in here, which I think is so pretty. Underneath, in this special little pot here, is a clematis. It's a bush clematis. It is Recta purpurea compacta. So it's a compact purple bush clematis. And the reason it's being it's being protected is because I planted it and within about an hour a rabbit came and ate it. So if a clematis gets eaten or something happens to it, typically it will come back and it'll send up new shoots. But you can't do that forever. So it did send up another new shoot. It took probably a month before it did that. It did send up a new shoot, but I've been protecting it underneath this little willow cloche uh, just in case somebody comes along and thinks they're gonna get it again to let it get really established in this area. I think of all these areas, I actually think this one is probably looking the best. Um, it gets it gets uh, more sun earlier in the day than the other ones do, although everybody gets a fair, you know, a good amount of sun for the most part. But I'm just really happy with with this area here. This is a Carex over here um, that I picked up. Let's just see what it's called because I can't actually remember. This is a uh, Carex alata tussock sedge. And uh, it doesn't even look like a Carex to me. It looks like something else, but uh, I, I'm liking how it looks through here. We'll have to see how that develops over time. Now we did change this path. This path used to essentially be straight down here. And we wanted to add in some curves. We also needed to account for the fact that this crab apple is growing out. So you actually couldn't, it was sort of impeding the walk down the path when it was straight because some people, not me, but some people would hit their heads on it. So we curved this path a little bit and I bumped out this corner right here of this bed. So again, I just carried over most of the plants from this side over here. So we've got more of that Autumn Bride Heuchera. We've got, um, uh, probably Summer Beauty or Millen I think it's Millennium Allium in here that was saved. This is um, Germander right here. We've got some more of that beautiful Stachys Humalo through here, which is beautiful. Some poppies popping up. And as we come around this corner, I've just been kind of filling this in a little bit. There's a few things in there to try to blend it in with what's been growing behind it. Uh, this is Jewels of Opar, which reseeds readily, and I've been moving the seedlings as they pop up over here. So we'll see how that how that goes. But I think when you look at this two sides of the path from back here, I think there's a nice cohesion here since we're carrying some of the plants from here over to here. And that's what I like to do with paths is try to make them relate to each other in some way so that you don't feel like one side of you is a completely different area than the other. So those are all the new garden areas this year. It's way more gardens than I, this is always how it goes, way more gardens than I anticipated creating this year. But um, it was a good time to do it as long as everything was sort of ripped up. Um, and of course you have to do something. I mean, it was either revert that back to grass or plant something there or just mulch over the whole thing and think about it for a while. So I opted to just, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound on this and just go for it. And I think it's, I think, it was a good time to do it because my brain was in that same frame of reference. So all these all these areas will relate to each other well, I think. And it will be a joy to see these these come together. Uh, they were most of these areas were planted pretty thickly. And uh, boy, I mean, if you're able to do that, it's really nice to be able to do that. I mean, sometimes you can't. Um, sometimes you might need to plan for a year in order to be able to do that and start growing some things from seed or plan on dividing things from around your garden in order to do that, as I've done with some of these areas. Um, 
but I like it a lot. So all of this is really quite a change for me. Before there were no plants on the other side. It was just either weeds or trees over there. And this one had a ton of shrubs in it before. So it's quite a difference with just the perennials there. And although this is on sort of the north side of our house, uh, so it's not like it's a window that we look out of a ton when we're just sitting around, but oddly enough, the bathroom window faces this way. And so when I'm getting ready in the morning, I am constantly looking out the window. So interestingly, I look at these gardens probably more than I look at other gardens just because of that. And what's nice is I'm looking at it in the morning and the sun is hitting them and it's, it's beautiful. Okay, so that is an update on the new gardens. Thank you for being patient about the fact that, you know, they're not perfect right now because gardens really aren't. So maybe it's good that I showed you them in less than perfect state. And we're going to do some tours of the rest of the garden. As long as we're into not perfect garden tours, we're going to do some tours though. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.